Hello students of Year 11. We meet once again to learn something new and during this lesson, I will teach you how to write a paragraph. Sometimes we all find it difficult to write paragraphs. Even if we do write a text, we rarely break our writing into paragraphs. Paragraphs are very important, especially when we write lengthy answers or essays. Going forward, you will have to break your writing into paragraphs if you have to write a report for work or a thesis for your degree. So this lesson will be useful to you. You will also get questions for your O-level paper. Test 8 in paper 1 usually asks you to write a paragraph for 5 marks. Let's write out a couple of answers for some of the questions that have appeared in the past papers towards the end of this lesson. But first, let's learn the basics of how to write a paragraph. Paragraphs can be compared to a pile of building blocks. They add up to make a structure, in this case, an essay. A paragraph is a group of at least five sentences. Each paragraph should highlight one major idea. So we can define a paragraph as a group of sentences that support one main idea. You must be wondering then, what do I decide to put into my paragraph? First of all, you need to decide what the most important idea that you are conveying to the reader is. The information you present for that paragraph should relate to that idea. In other words, your paragraph should remind the reader that there is a relationship between the main point of your paragraph and the rest of the paragraph. For this, you can use what is commonly known as the Peel format. What is the Peel format? P stands for main point. As I mentioned before, every paragraph should have a main point. E stands for evidence. Back your main point always, support it with evidence or examples. The next E stands for explanation. Explain how the evidence supports your main point. And finally, L means link. Link the point to context. Let's look at an example so that you can get an idea. In this, the main point is given and then is supported by evidence and explanation and finally there is a link between that and the main point or you can link it to the next point. So the moment you decide what your main sentence is, you need to start brainstorming for ideas that will support that idea. After you list out the points you want to say, you must ensure that every paragraph should be unified. That means all of the sentences in your paragraph has to be related to a single main idea. It also has to be coherent. That means the sentences should be arranged in a logical manner and should have a definite flow. Finally, also remember to have a well-developed paragraph. Every idea discussed in the paragraph should be adequately explained with supporting ideas and evidence. If you follow the Peel format, you will note a world of a difference. Now let's look at an example from your pupil's book that has some pretty good paragraphs that follow the Peel format. You can take an example from it. Please turn to Unit 2 Activity 3 on page 15. It's a reading passage with some questions. We won't be doing the questions, but we will simply be looking at the structure of each paragraph. Let's read the first paragraph together. Water rafting is an adventurous outdoor team activity. It is done in white water or different degrees of rough water using an inflatable raft. This sport is challenging and considered to be dangerous if the necessary safety precautions are not followed. This has now become a popular sport. However, it is necessary to minimize the impact of this sport on nature. There should be a leave no trace policy when engaging in rafting. 
The sportsman should learn to dispose of waste properly, leave what they find in the wilderness, respect wildlife, keep fires small, etc. Now let's examine this paragraph a little closely. The main point of this paragraph is water rafting. It is an adventurous outdoor team activity. This is your main point. Next, it gives evidence as to why it is considered to be dangerous. We are told that it is done in white water or different degrees of rough water using an inflatable raft. Further explanation is given when the writer states that this sport is challenging and considered to be dangerous if the necessary safety precautions are not followed. Let's look at a short clip of water rafting and determine whether it is dangerous or not. Yes, that looks quite dangerous. If you noticed, the paragraph discusses how dangerous this particular sport is and goes on to state about the impact of the sport on nature. Now let's look at the next paragraph too. It describes a different sport. Both paragraphs are in the same article but discuss two separate ideas and topics. In this case, two separate sports. There is another popular action sport called skydiving. This is also known as parachuting. Skydiving is done by jumping out of an aircraft and falling for as long as one safely can before opening the parachute. Once the sportsmen jump out of the aircraft, they fall freely with the aid of gravity. The real challenge is to slow down the fall and reach the earth with the help of the parachute. This sport is practiced even during the 18th century and it is said that in 1797, André Jacques Garnerin jumped from a hot air balloon with a parachute. It was the first incident of truly modern skydiving. In the military, it is used as the backup safety mechanism for airmen. Many modern militaries use skydiving for troop deployment, while firefighters also parachute to reach remote sites so that they can be on the ground quickly. At present, it is a well-known recreational sport. Now that we read paragraph two of activity three, let's pick out the main point. And the rest of the paragraph explains and presents evidence of the sport. I'm sure you have an idea of skydiving. We see it also in some of your favorite action movies. After presenting evidence and explanations, the paragraph ends with the link. You can read the rest of the paragraph and look at how the paragraphs in this text have been constructed. The third paragraph is on surfing and the fourth paragraph is on pole vaulting. After reading this text, you can look at the pictures at the start of Unit 2 on page 14. Each of those pictures show the sports that are described in four paragraphs. Now let's turn to revision two in your workbook. Page 92, question number six. Let's do it together. Write a paragraph about a national religious festival celebrated in Sri Lanka. Use about 50 words, include the following. Who celebrates it, its significance, when it is celebrated and how it is celebrated. Sri Lanka is a multi-religious country and we are so lucky that we can enjoy all the religious festivals that are celebrated in the country. Let's write about a religious festival that I celebrate. You can write your own thereafter. Remember to refer to the guidelines given. One of the many national religious festivals celebrated in Sri Lanka is Christmas. Christians from around the country get together in prayer and festivity to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on the 25th of December every year. Christians usually go to church and attend a service. Christmas Day is usually spent with family and friends with food and song. 
Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas is an important day for children as this is the day that Santa Claus enters homes with presents through the chimney. Most Christians decorate their homes with a Christmas tree and sometimes with a nativity. Now that you have an idea of how to write a paragraph, let's look at a question from your 2019 O-Level English paper. Test 8. Write a paragraph on one of the following topics. Use about 50 to 60 words. The place where I live or how I spend my free time. Both topics are very interesting. Which one would you choose? I think I will choose B, how I spend my free time. Remember, you will be getting five marks for this question. I spend most of my free time reading. I love to read, especially novels. I already have a large collection of books because everyone I know buys me books as presents. I enjoy reading novels because I learn about foreign countries and unusual situations. Reading also cultivates imagination and improves vocabulary. Well, it's that simple. I hope this lesson has given you some Well, it's that simple. I hope this lesson has given you some idea on how you can write a paragraph. Remember, several paragraphs make an essay and every paragraph should describe one point. If you want to watch more lessons like the one you just saw, please subscribe to our channel. Have a great day.